Hey there folks, strap yourselves in, because I'm sure as you can tell from the length of this video, this is a long one, this is a doozy, this is an incredibly stally battle. My opponent is Zabuza of the Water, who has kicked my butt in Little Cup more than once, but now we're in UU, and I've got a fairly decent team, so I'm hoping it'll still be a little bit better of a battle. Um, looking at his team, I am absolutely perplexed by that Shogun, but beyond that, I mean, uh, Guanzong is a pain to deal with, but I'm not really fearing too much on his team, I just know I'm going to have to be careful. So he's going to, I'll go ahead and lead off with my, uh, play doll, just to set up rocks. He leads off with Victini, and I'm going to stay and see what he's going to do. He goes for the U-turn, based on that amount of damage, it's a little too low for Band, so I'm guessing he's probably the Scarf set. Probably hadn't been Scarf, so I get out my rocks first turn, that's great. Obviously I can't do anything to this Bronzong, assuming that he's not running the gimmicky uh, heatproof set. So anyway, I go ahead and switch out. I go out into Randy uh, to go for a Fire Blast. Randy is my Slowbro, and Fire Blast does a decent chunk, but not a great amount. He will add Toxic to me. Luckily I have Mick, who's a Cleric, so I'm really okay with that. Probably I, I think Zapdos might have been a better bit of a better switch into uh, Bronzong, especially considering the move. The, the Tox, not the Tox, I'm sorry, the uh, Stealth Rock is incredibly obvious. Now, Shogun, I don't actually think I have any ice on this team. I do have a Dragon type move, actually. Oh, yeah, I have Hidden Power Ice, but even the Hidden Power Ice isn't going to do anything to a Pokemon that bulky. And he's running some kind of Wish set, but you know what? Other than maybe Toxic Stalling, I really don't see what this guy can do. And I have things I can use to get around Toxic Stalling. Um, namely, I have Durant, who's immune, and I have uh, I have Mick, my Umbreon, who has the uh, heal belt. So anyway, he actually goes for a Dragon Claw, which does more damage than I was thinking. I was actually, a uh, chance that I think I've seen with Sheldon has been the um, Dragon Dance set, but that's, I just don't see, you gotta get a lot of Dragon Dance before that thing gets scary, I, especially considering I have a steel on my team. Anyway, now I go out into my Zapdos, I spun, oh, I, I spun away the rocks, I did, but he set up the new rocks. Goes for a Gyro Ball, uh, it's resisted, and Zapdos, I believe, is running a, I think it's actually running a Tinder, but anyway, I go for a Heat Wave, I don't think he thought I would have the Heat Wave, and I almost take him out, it gets so, so close, but it's not quite enough, um, so, but the thing is, I do have my rocks up, so I think that if he switched out, then, well, I mean, he does have a spinner and him on top. Anyway, decides not to bother trying to spin away and then come back in, and I get the first KO of the match with a Volt Switch, take out his, um, his bonds on. So that's great. I go out now into my Scarf Mindshow. Uh, to just scout out what he's going to do. And here I go for a dual chop. Yeah, it's a dragon type move. Actually, high jump kick does more damage, but I went for the dual chop specifically because I feared he might go for, uh, he might go for protect. So here I'm just going to try to stall out his Sheldon, um, with my Umbreon. And, you know, if he, 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 he talks with me, it wouldn't I wouldn't get synchronized on him, which sucks. I don't know that he has a cleric on his team. Maybe Shogun is running Heal Belt. I'm not sure. I think Shogun actually can run Heal Belt through an event or something. Can I go for Protect here just to see what he's going to do? Uh, he goes for the sub. Not great that that guy's behind the sub, but my slow girl walls him for days, so I'm really not afraid. He's going to go for a Rapid Spin. I'm thinking I'm going for a Wish because I don't think he... I think he's predicting my Switch out. So I'm basically seeing how far I can go. I can also, I think, even take a close combat from an uh, Intimidate, uh, from a, you know, non, uh, from this hit on top. Anyway, he goes for a close combat here, and I act, Nesgadol actually survives. It's incredible, and this is the best part. That wish is gonna, uh, get hit me, and, um, uh, Nesgadol, my playoff is gonna go back up to almost three quarters-ish. Goes for a Sucker Punch here. Uh, you know, physical move against a pretty bulky Pokemon. I'm able to rapid spin. It sucks that rapid spin is considered attacking move. I mean, it does mean that it can't, it can't be stopped with taunt, but it sucks that it's an attacking move. I'm actually really excited, potentially, about uh, the new mechanics for uh, Defog. Because if you're not running a team that cares too much about rocks, or let's say your opponent is set up like 10 or all seven whatever layers of entry hazards, and you set up none, I guess it's actually six. No, no, seven now with Sticky Web. You can just go for Defog, and it'll clear all hazards on the field, your side and your opponent's side, but, you know, in certain situations, that can be quite advantageous. So, 
He goes for a rapid spin to get rid of the rocks. Um, that's fine. Uh, you know, I don't... The whole point of me going for stealth rock or something with a rapid spinner out is just because it'll force him to waste a turn. Anyway, go for a T-Wave here, thinking he would go out either... In, or I think it was like Zapdos, honestly. But instead he goes out to Shell Gun, a very wise move. Now here is where it's time to start doing work. Uh, he can't do anything to my... Um, so I actually go for Rock Slide first turn, thinking that he might go out into his Victini. Hustle does not screw me over. I don't think the crit even mattered. I take out his Victini, and that is phenomenally awesome. So now he goes up into his Zapdos. I go for the Rock Slide. I, I should be faster, and I'm just hoping it takes him out. It doesn't. It appears that he's a bulkier set, but he's too weak to make a substitute. And he was going for a sub, so I think this must be a sub charge beam set. I hate that set. Uh, actually, I didn't hate that stuff before this battle. Okay, go for another rock slide. None of these attacks are missing, and I am feeling like the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I decide here I'm not going to push my luck. I'm going to go right out into Randy to take what? Close combat or something? I don't know. He does have a shell gun here, so he's he's got his own wish, and I really want to set up rocks before Zapdos comes back in. Because if I can do that, and he doesn't spin them away, then... You know, that would be great, but unfortunately here the Zapdos is back out. I go for Fallow Play, I'm like, yes, take him out, take him out, and doesn't take him out, and the wish comes true, and ah, Fallow Play screwed me over. Now he goes for a sub, Not, nothing I can do. I'm going to go for the wish, um, and I'll, someone will get recovered, I'm not sure who. Uh, I decided I'm going to go out into Nesgadol, thinking he might go for the T-Bolt. Said he goes for a hidden power, it's either grass or ice, almost certainly, and so he does manage to take out my, uh, my uh, play doll. So, great prediction on his part, sucks for me. Go out into, um, go out into my Mind Shao here, I go ahead and hit him with a Stone Edge. He goes for Roost. Uh, this is going to be a really annoying, stally set. But I am faster, and well, I mean, but he's proven himself. He's probably the physically defensive set based on the amount of attacks that he survived. Uh, but he still doesn't want to take the Stone Edge, which is wise. Uh, it doesn't matter if the Stone Edge missed anyway, as he goes out into his hit on top. I go back out into Randy. This is going to be, you know, so neither of us are able to really keep rocks up. Rocks are gone permanently from his side now. Uh, yeah, actually, and I guess both of our uh, both of our stealth rockers are now KO'd. Uh, so, this is going to be a very switchy, switch-heavy match because there's no penalty for switching. Uh, also, I have two regenerators on my team and a wish passer. He has a wish passer too. Yeah, you know you can see why this was a long battle. Uh, I believe the total turn count came to 100, which I'd like to say that was the longest battle I've ever had. It is not. It is not. For those of you who remember my RU team, I haven't posted a battle with it in a while. Uh, for good reason, I was not really prepared to have another super stally battle. Um, but, you know, okay, so, and here I go with an incredibly stally battle. But, so I'm just basically, I'm, I'm trying to play around the Shelagon, try to predict when he's going to switch out and what it out into. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out too well for me. I'm going to switch out here, go out into Namdi, uh, and he goes for sub, uh, which... It's a great. It's not the greatest situation for me. I go for the high jump kick. It hits. That's fine. He goes for the hydro pump. I don't know that I can survive a hydro pump. Uh, I cannot. That really. That really blows. Go out now into Lusitania. I have a superpower. Uh, and that will do a lot of damage. So he goes out into his intimidate. This is just you know fairly obvious move. I guess I could have gone for the home pause, but I didn't want to predict. Uh, really, the danger on. For me with this team is over predicting and well with any stall team you don't want to over predict even though you know what your opponent's going to do the idea is you never want to predict you always want to make the safest move because with stall teams you lose a part of your core and things start going south really really quickly so i really wish the shell god weren't paralyzed because if it weren't paralyzed i could toxic it if i could toxic it it would be dead by now well maybe not by now you know, he's got quite a few wishes left, but this battle would have got a lot easier. So I don't actually remember how I paralyzed this guy, but however it happened, I wish it hadn't happened that way. So really, not much I can do here. Uh, I, I, this the shotgun's going to be the death of me. There's nothing I can do to it. So I got him to Mick, who at least at the very least should wall him and stall him out. I mean, I do have so I do have Lusitania, but Lusitania is going to be difficult to switch in. 
guess it would be difficult to do things with. I go ahead and go for another wish. Uh, and, you know, there's, we're just wish stalling back and forth between the two of us. And there's not really much we can do on the subject. So this is an incredibly, incredibly stally, incredibly nothing happening battle. And this is why I like having rocks up, and this is why I tend not to run spinners in, in favor of more rocks, more ability to set up hazards, because you, know, you don't want to get into these kinds of situations. And, you know, people, people disparage it because of a lot, but there's a reason why they came into prominence and why... And I, th I really think that's, that hazards were a good thing for the metagames, because they speed things up, they prevent you from switching out too much. So, He's gonna go for another sub here. I think I go for a wish. Yeah. Uh, he goes for a hydro pump. I'm just gonna take that, and I'm fine with taking it. I go for a heal bell here, which is going to get rid of Randy's uh, uh, toxic, and that means I should be able to switch out into it. Oh, so it's the Agil it's the Agilipolion set, probably running um, Pataya Berry. So it's Agil sub Pataya, which was a, I guess a pretty popular set down in Gen Four. But I don't think, no matter what, that he can do anything to Randy, because, I mean, even sometimes these guys run Grass Knot. Yeah, so here's the Grass Knot, but Slowbo's actually pretty light. Uh, so, super effective, whatever. It only does about half, and I do have the slack off on this set, so as long as he doesn't crit, I'm in an okay situation. Uh, I go ahead and switch out here, just because I want to. Uh, he also is going to obviously go for the sub, and here comes the Pattaya. So really not a great situation for me. He goes for the Hydro Pump. I'm pretty sure I can take that, and I can, so I'm going to have to Wish Protect, and I hate Wish Protect stalling him, but I need him to run out of Hydro Pumps. That's the really... Without Hydro Pumps, this guy is not scary even a little bit, and he knows that too. So that's why he went for the Grass Knot. Actually, he might have been predicting the Switch, uh, but... I have to have him run out of Hydro Pumps, and his Hydro Pump misses there, which is nice for me. I'm not gonna lie, it was really helpful. He goes for another Hydro Pump here, but unless he crits, you know, that amount of damage... Okay, so that did a lot, uh, but, you know, whatever. So, and my wish is gonna get me back up to, you know, three quarters, and I'm pretty sure I could take another Hydro Pump. So now he decides, whatever, sack the sub, go out into Zapdos here, uh, as I go for the wish. So... He, he now can't, he's wasted his Pattaya boost. He can't sub again. I don't think he can sub again. Well, yeah, no, he can't sub again. Um, here, I make a risky play, thinking, hoping that my Zephyrus can survive a hit from this guy, and I it can. I actually was thinking he'd probably go for the sub. And now I'm up to 203. I go for the Hidden Power Ice. Um, that might have been a mistake. I think T-Bolt does more damage. So, uh, yeah, this is, I think that was a, I'll, I'll put up the information, but I'm pretty sure that this is a calc I did back in Gen 4 once, that uh, T-Bolt is the way to go, unless it's 4x factor. So here I go for the T-Bolt against his Hitmontop, and it nearly takes him out, and I'm thinking, you know, I haven't seen the Sucker Punch on him, but I don't want to risk it, because Sucker Punch would definitely KO, and I need that Zapdos for kind of a lot on his team. I'm kind of relying pretty heavily on that Zapdos. That, that Zapdos does not have Roost, doesn't have any sort of recovery. I really, really relies on Wish Passing. Here I go for the Skull. Uh, he is down to very low HP. I think he's basically got to sack this guy. Uh, he doesn't have the Battaglia Boost. He can't sub. He gets a... That had to have been. That wasn't even a crit. Wow, that's incredible. Anyway, I take him out. Oh, well, no, not even Torrent, because whatever. I take him out. That's the important thing. And uh, that is fine. Now the Zapdos is going to be back out, going to switch out and into Mick because Mick can take any hit from this guy. I'm a little bit concerned about charge beams because enough charge beams and you can even break through my Umbreon. Um, but it's not, yeah. So he's going to go for Roost. I think I'm going to go for foul play here. The idea is to break his sub, force him to Roost or something like that. I know, you actually go for a whiff. So, uh, this is, this is tricky, this is really tricky, and I've got to be able to stall him out and predict him well. I go out into Lusitania here, thinking, I don't know what this is. I'm to charge beam and hits, I survive the hit, but he gets a special attack boost. I'm back up to almost full HP, but he's behind a sub. This really is not a great situation, and the rock slide misses! Then the friggin' rock slide missed. And had that rock slide not missed, I could have broken through and I would have I would have actually killed him. To add insult to injury, the second rock slide misses. 
So, for a battle that was actually doing extremely well with the no Haxi, it basically just cost me the match, uh, I'm thinking at this point. Because there's two rock sides missed, he's behind the sub, can't do anything to him, and now he's like at plus two or three with all those charge beams. Ah, I cannot believe... So, yeah, okay, it's, I mean, it's hustle. Hustle screws you over. Rock slide does not have 100% accuracy. Nothing I could do, but it was just a really bad time for that to happen. It was basically the worst possible time for that to happen. So, yeah, I'm screwed. I do not see how I'm going to take him out. Although, <coughs> honestly, if Charge Beam is the, his best attacking move for my Umbreon, I might be able to uh, PP stall him out. I mean, I know he has, I know he has pressure. So my attacks that I actually attack him with, which is just foul of play, will lose PP faster. But, you know, I'm actually thinking... I, well, I'm thinking there's nothing I can do to zap this. Really, I should, re I should have resigned at this point, because I really don't think I can win the battle. But I'm not one to resign. It's very, very rare that I uh, forfeit a battle. I just play them and see how they go. And <laughs> that made this battle, what, five minutes longer? Probably uh, 25 turns longer than it needed to be? So, I'm just going for the foul plays, and I think I'm going to try to do a little bit of prediction. I'm hoping I can get the timing just right that I'll be doing a switch into Zapdos when there's a wish up in the air as he has to go for a sub. But, you know, it's not really going to work out too well, I don't think. Here I go for the switch, go into Lamash 2. Uh, not really much else I can do. So, he goes ahead and subs again. I go for the Volt Switch, which should break his sub, I think. It does, it does, because he's, as I said, he's almost certainly the physically defensive, not especially defensive set. I love Zapdos, it's an incredible Pokemon. He goes for the Hidden Power here. I guess it would do, yeah, Hidden Power Ice, would, that is what it is, would do more damage than Charge Beam. Uh, Thunderbolt, though, does not. So here, I go ahead and go for another foul play. Yeah, I, I don't think it's actually possible for me to break his sub and force him to switch uh, while... Oh, uh, basically, uh, force him to sub while I'm... Um, got a wish in there because I would have to go to, uh, to wish that turn. So yeah, it doesn't really make sense. So he's going to go for another hidden power here. He's trying to save his... something, so I don't know. He's trying to save his attacks as best he can. Uh, so here my wish comes true, and I'm back up to a bit more than half. And I think I actually might be getting his PP fairly low. So that's okay. Uh, he goes for another sub. Uh, I go for wish. It's, you know, I really wish that there were a tool that I could... I guess I could just write, start writing things down. But I guess when I know that a battle is going to be stally... I wish I could... Sorry, let's, let me rephrase this. I wish I could know in advance that a battle was going to be stalling, because if I could know in advance that a battle was going to be stalling, then I could write down how many attacks an opponent used. So there I talked over my Zapdos dying. Not really much that could have been done. I don't know why I went to Randy. Maybe that was a misclick. Maybe I was trying to bait him into going for a move. But uh, anyway, his, attack, his special attack keeps going up and up and up. And I mean, this battle, this battle is over. But I am making him. I am making him pay for this victory. I am making him work for it as much as I can. So this is going to. I'm going to spoil this. You can skip to the end of the battle if you want. This is going to be a loss. I'm not going to get any more KOs. But I am just going to make him pay dearly for this victory, which is kind of a dick move, you can argue. And I'm sure I'll get hateful comments here that said I should have resigned, blah blah blah, turns ago, or I shouldn't have protected. I should just uh, not drag this out. But you never know with these things. Sometimes, you know, things go in your favor. Sometimes I actually would have been able to stall him out completely, uh, have him waste all his moves uh, before I ran out of wishes. So here he goes for another charge beam. His attack keeps going up. He must be close to plus six by now. I mean, this is just insane. But my only hope, my really only hope is that I can get him to struggle. And, uh, you know, fine, that's not really realistic, but... There's nothing to be gained by forfeiting other than saving you guys a few minutes of video to watch and a few minutes of video that you can get a comment on. And, uh, you know, you can just skip through it anyway. So, uh, I'm doing a lot of apologizing. So, I, it's clearly I think I should have done something differently. 
Uh, so here he goes for a rooster. He must be running low on PP. So I really am worrying him about running out of PP. Uh, I kind of wish that... So if this was PBR, I could be showing you how many PP I still had left. I'm actually going to consider when, I, when it comes to Gen 6 battling, not just uploading the battle videos, but actually recording it while I have the battles so that I can you know, look down on the second screen and uh, you know, on the recording and say, aha, yeah, I had... Yeah, this is why I made this move, I was out of PP or something like that. So here I'm just doing a little bit of regenerator stalling. Again, the name of the game is PP Stall Him Out, which is, again, a dick move. Uh, and But it's the only hope that I have. And you know, there's, there's what, less than a minute left in this battle, so as you're going to know, the battle is... Something's going to change soon, and um, this battle is going to end fairly soon anyway. But here he goes for the Hidden Power Grass. I guess he was expecting to switch out into Slowbro, and Mix Health goes down, 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 and it takes him out thanks to a crit. And I'm not going to complain about that crit. It saved us in an additional 20, 30 turns of this battle. So now I go into Randy. Randy can't do anything. Um, charging is going to KO. No problem. No problem. So, uh, great games of Booze of the Water. I'm sorry I made you work so hard for that victory. Comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge, folks.